Hi everyone and welcome to the second part of the tutorial. My name is Germano Mombach, 3D motion designer based in Sweden. In this part of the tutorial, we're gonna take a look into shaders, lighting and rendering. So let's dive into it. First, I want to mention that I went back to the scene we finished before and I redid a few things. I changed the sub steps back to 15 and I also fine tuned the camera and the speed of the lambics. With that said, let's dive into it. Organization is important, so we create a new node called Scene. And now you can drop your scene inside this node. And we also have another node called PCAM, so that one is already created. And then create another node called Background. We're gonna put our background, it's a simple background on it later on. Everything starts with an HDRI, so we create a DOM light and I'm using, in my case, Grayscale Gorilla Creative Office. But if you don't have it, feel free to use another HDRI that gives you similar results. I'm dropping out the Creative Office into the path and then I'm gonna like lower the saturation to zero. This way the HDRI doesn't have any influence in the saturation, only in the light part. I have a window layout where we have the ready shift render view on the left side and the scene on the right. Back to the dome light now, we can decrease the intensity to 0.4. Cleaning the project a bit, I created default materials to take the previews out, so let's delete that, you might not have it. In the dome light, after playing with the rotation, I came up with these numbers. I'm just gonna paste the rotation on and in the H is minus 117, P12 and B minus 7. If you don't have the same HDRI, I'm gonna explain the concepts later. So now let's create the materials. I'm gonna create one standard material with double click called Sphere. And another double click and I'm gonna create another material called Background. Double click again to create another material, this time called cloth. Those are the materials we need for the objects in our scene. I noticed in the dome light in the object tab, we have the environment and background. We don't need to visualize that, so I turn that off. For the background, we create a plane. And I go into the front view and I'm gonna lower that down until approximately minus 500. Middle mouse button, I go in the top view and scale the plane up until it fills the space behind the cloth. I'm looking into the redshift render view as I move the plane. We are good to continue. Let's drop the sphere material into the sphere object we have in our scene. Double click on that. The material of the sphere is similar to a car shader, so metalness is one. Now with C, search for flakes. The out normal output of the flakes goes directly into the bump input of the standard material. I'm gonna drop the scale to 0.2, so we have smaller flakes, and the randomize to 0.02, the randomizes how strong the flakes are. Jumping out of the camera and coming closer to the sphere, we can see in the left side the flakes in action in the highlights. So the size is looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna color the sphere, taking out the out flakes ID as an information. Just gonna increase the randomize a little bit to 0 0.025 to make the effect even stronger. The Outflex ID go directly into color. Now you press C and drag a ramp into the connector line. Now that we've had a black and white map into the color, the Outflex ID, the ball became too contrasted as you can see on the left. I'm gonna decrease that by increasing the black parts of the ramp and decreasing the lightest part of the ramp. Something about 80 in the lightest part is gonna make the trick. This way we can still see the effect, but it's not super strong, it's a subtle effect. 
This wax node is a procedurally made bump effect, so we can create these sparkling highlights. Pretty neat. Now it is the time to drop the cloth material into our cloth. The default material looks totally wrong, like a hard plastic, the highlights are too strong and also they are too sharp. And also in the subsurface you can increase the weight to 0.2 that is gonna make the light pass through the cloth when hitting the object from behind, beautiful. Increase the roughness to 0.45 and drop the high width of the reflection to 0.6. Now we have something that looks more like a cloth and less like plastic. Press C to access the node menu, then select the Fresnel node. Connect the out color output of the Fresnel node to the color input. Press C and look for ramp dragging into the connecting line. Soloing that becomes easier to visualize, so you can just increase the blacks of the ramp to around 40%. Perfect. That way it becomes less contrasty, but you still have those highlights in the Fresnel part of the cloth. Just putting in another moment of our animation, now you will start to fix the light in different parts. For that we need keyframes and different lights. It would be nice to have a stronger light in front of the ball, so we can highlight the path that the ball is going through. So for that I create an arrow light and I rotate to 90 degrees. This light is gonna be sharper, so we need to lower the spread. I'm just positioning the light just out of the camera, selecting the light, and then you can go into the spread and lower that down to 0.4, and intensity lower that to around three, it's too strong right now, so you can notice the light is more dull hitting the ball and is highlighting the path. This area light needs to follow the sphere, so select first the area light and the sphere, go to constraint and add parent constraint. We used this technique in the tutorial before, so now we know that the area light is gonna follow the sphere perfect. Going forward in animation, this part looks dark, so create another area light and rotate it to 90 degrees, Look, the light is looking up. Notice that I'm in the front view and position the light lower and looking up to the curve. Now I'm gonna make the light bigger, so you can do that too. So it doesn't have to be exact numbers, but you can visualize in the render view what feels right. Lowering the intensity to one is gonna help and now we can maybe keyframe the exposure. Here I'm thinking what looks right and doesn't look too bright, not too dark, so you have a Nice gradient between the darkest part of the image and the brightest part. Organizing the project called Follow Light. This is the light that is following the ball. And the one that you created right now can be called Bottom, but you can choose your own name. Fine tuning the light with the exposure. I choose this time to keyframe the intensity. So one keyframe at frame 82, the place where I want, and another at 66 to 0. Moving the timeline forward and going to the light details, and in the reflection side, you can lower that to something around 0 0.6 so it doesn't become too strong. Now move your timeline forward until around here and copy with control the first keyframe so you have a key, first keyframe zero the intensity of the light that you want and zero again the idea is to fix specific moments that you see that are too dark or too bright during the animation here i'm fixing the thickness of the cloth making it even thicker something around minus 3.5 because I noticed that bow uh, was passing through the cloth that looks better. Playing from the start again, maybe this part is too dark, look at the wrinkles, we can brighten that up just a little bit with uh, light there. So I create a new area light. This is not a, a strong light, it's just a backlight to fill the shadows and bring the shadows up a bit. So rotate to minus 90 and position it accordingly. 
Now lower the intensity, something around one and let's bring in the details the reflection down. Adjusting the exposure you can fine tune your light. The important thing here is to pay attention to the rendering, the right shift left side and adjust to what it feels right to you. Moving forward now, there's another dark moment when we start fixing that too. For that I go in the top view and then I select camera and perspective. In this way I can move the camera and have a preview to position the light without changing the left side, the redshift render view. That's a trick, I like to light this way and I do all the time. Position the light to the right moment, lowering the intensity, going into details and changing the reflection back to zero. You can notice on the ball right now when I change that, the reflection disappears. So now we are affecting mostly the diffuse and GI and so on. You can adjust the intensity. Three feels okay and put a keyframe, then back in time, another keyframe on zero and then forward on time again and another keyframe on zero. So you have a light from going from zero to the intensity you want back to zero, affecting this particular moment. Now moving forward in this moment, the highlight it is too strong on the cloth part, so we can turn the lights on and off to find which light is causing this. In this case, it is the dome light. It is okay to keyframe the intensity of the dome light, in this case the exposure, but just remember, don't overdo it, do it lightly, because otherwise the whole scene is gonna change too much. So it is the same uh, principle, I'm gonna keyframe before, and then I keyframe in the moment I want the light to change, and then later on, the key, the, in this case, the light is going back to what it was. Here in this moment, the cloth, maybe it's too dark, so we can create another support light that I'm calling and tweak that again to bring the cloth up a little bit. And this is a support light, so it's not too strong. And the process repeats itself, adjusting the intensity and keyframing the light in the moment I want the light to have an effect and then moving forward and turning the light off. Those are all small changes in light. Uh, there are no like big jump on it, but those small changes, they add up and the, your scene becomes more consistent. One trick you can use in the sphere, if you notice the sphere is too dark, you can go into the material and then raise the emission by something like 0 0.01. This is not technically correct, but it works. Scrolling through the timeline, everything seems to be okay. The last thing you can do is go to Redshift and change to the RS camera. And in the gearbox, then you have a new option called Optical. In the Optical tab, you have Tone Mapping. This, the highlights are gonna get turned down. So you have an extra layer of control. I recommend you to use this as the last step so you can gain a little bit of dynamic range. To increase the subdivisions in render, you can go to cloth surface, right click, render, tags, and then RS object, go into the geometry, click override, tessellation enable, unclick screen space adaptive, and minimum length to 0 0.8, and maximum subdivisions to three. That is gonna be it. Please uncheck screen space adaptive. This option is only on when you have a still frame and not an animation. Look at how smooth the cloth is looking to the render view and this is exactly what you need. I'm gonna turn that off and you can see. Now turning that on the effect of the tessellation. The last thing we can do is the same for the sphere. We can right click, go into render tags, object tag, override, enable, uncheck screen space adaptive. This time we can change to something like one or two. 
I recommend going into the documentation if you want to learn more about the Redshift render tag and the override tessellation properties. So that's it. I'm looking through the animation. Everything seems to be looking all right. Now it is the time to render this in low resolution check. If the light is working and if everything is fine, you render in full resolution. So quit your project. I hope you learned something new and until next time.